Yes, indeed, you already know what it is. It's Kitchen Talk. It is not a cooking show, and you know it's definitely not a love show. We in the kitchen. We having real talk. Man, big shout out to my guy, Ricky. Free Ricky today. Free Ricky. Free Ricky. It's me, your boy, Mano. Georgie, a.k.a. your favorite time boy in Harlem, Rock. Man, we back for another one right now. Big shout out to Fox Soul, because we lit. You understand? And today, we got some guests here today that I have absolutely a lot of respect for. Um, King My Son, Queen Tamika Mallory. I tell you all the time, I got a lot of respect for what you do, brother. Yes, sir. You know, and I don't get I don't get a chance to tell you. I don't get a chance to tell well, you. You have, though. You have. You know, but I see y'all doing the work every day. Right? And when I say every day, I don't know if y'all take a day off. <laughs> we don't know. We take I don't know if y'all take a day off. Sometimes we work two days in one, so then the next day wow. we might be off. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I mean, it's hard to see if you take a day off because, you know, in the world, so much happening. It's, 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 it's everything happening. It's, it's, you know, it's, um, it's a shooting over here. It's the brutality over here. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's things happening all over the country, and I feel like y'all, y'all always hands-on. And, you know, um, we live in a world where people uh, criticize people from the sideline, right? You know, oh, why are they doing this? They should be doing this. They, you should be doing more, you know, but the people, the people that's criticizing, I don't see them doing the work. Mm-hmm. You understand? Um, you, 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 you grew up in, uh, um, in, in movement. Yeah. Right? I found yeah. that out. Like, you grew up, um, would you say that uh, Al Sharpton is, uh, you, you like a protege of Al Sharpton? Uh, yes, certainly. I was raised by Reverend Sharpton. Mm. He basically gave me opportunity to be a leader, taught me what mm. it looked like to, you know, speak up for myself and to be a strong fighter and advocate. And at some point, um, you know, maybe I guess about eight years, 10 years ago, I don't even remember anymore, but I think it was about 10 years ago, I just decided that, okay, you know, I've I've got everything I needed. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to move forward and go on my own. And I decided to leave Nan at that point and start, um, you know, working on my own and just kind of finding my own way. But certainly National Action Network was the foundation. National Action Network, right, that's that's powerful. Al Sharpton thing. Wow, that's, um, you know, um, the thing about that is that I think that's extraordinary. I never seen, I don't know too many people that grew up like that, mm-hmm. right? You know, that grew up in the, you know, um, that have that, that, that sort of foundation. Um, what, what was that like being 14, 15 in, you know, in, a, in an organization like that, being around a person like, like Al Sharpton um, and, and being involved in, in, in Learning how to like, you know, uh, be a part in, in of the movement on the front line. Yeah. Well, my parents were leaders. Um, mm. You know, from me when I was very, very young, even before fourteen. Fourteen mm. when the, was it? Uh, fourteen is when I started working. Oh wow. Um, you know, I was on the payroll as a fourteen. But oh, so you was already prior like, to that. I was, was well baked already. into the movement. Absolutely. Uh, my parents, they're not in front of the camera type of people. Because, mm. you know, if you're leading and you are uh, you have a movement, you have to have folks that are not all in the limelight or in the spotlight. Mm. You have to have people who are in the background helping to keep things going. And I can remember my parents giving somewhere between 20 and and $100 a week every single Saturday in the collection plate. And to some people, that might seem like a little, but mm. it was a lot for mm. an organization just getting started. Um, you know, and, and for them to put along with other families, $100 per person in the collection plate, that's how they built National Action Network. Mm. So I learned a lot about stewardship, you know, giving. I learned, um, all, of course, about protesting and, um, you know, and, and challenging elected officials and challenging the system and speaking up and not being afraid to, mm. uh, you know, to speak out. All of that was, you know, how we were raised. And, it was, and you're right, it's not a lot of us that are out here who can say they grew up in the right. movement. Yeah. So, because you would either be children of, right. right, to grow up in the movement, you're usually the children of the leader. Of the leader. Right. right. Or, you know, you know, some kids around, but generally just being a child where your parents raised you and you became a leader in your own right, that's not really, that's not the norm. It's mm. not the norm. So, you know, and then of course the other piece of it is that I'm a woman which was very different. And I certainly felt that even in the movement growing up as a young girl, I knew I was a woman. You know, I always knew that the way in which the world accepts and appreciates men 
for their leadership is you don't you don't get the same thing as a woman. We get challenged more, told we can't dress a certain way, can't look like this, can't do this. Can't, you know, a lot of can'ts. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so, but you know, I, I have sort of, um, I guess, kicked down a lot of what they say is normal and made my own way. First time I saw you, never forget, years ago, maybe uh, over 10 years ago, um, at a game, Rucker, where it was like a celebrity, celeb, uh, celebrity basketball game. Mm -hmm. we, we was there, and I saw you, and you just look like this little girl. Like, <laughs> you just look like a little girl. And then I would see you, and I would hear your name over and over and over again. And, um, you know, here we are, you know, uh, the George Floyd, you know, um, you know, everything that's been happening. Um, you ever get tired? Mm hmm. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I get tired. Certainly. I mean, I think when you're fighting against systemic oppression, mm -hmm. That's not an easy thing to do. I, I, to, just today, I was walking through the airport, and it was like a new problem that came up. And I just was like, you know, like, I don't know how people just deal with every day, this, all of this stress. And then I'm like, I'm people. Like, I'm, I'm just like, I don't know how people deal with it. I'm <laughs> here on the forefront of people. <laughs> so it's, like, it's, like, it's like, how do you balance every day. having, because you're a mother, I right? Am, so I so am. how do you balance you know, your own personal life, being a mother, and then dealing with, you know, just life in itself, it, it, having your own personal life, and then taking on, you know, um, a lot of the issues that's going on in our community. Well, the, you know, and again, there is a difference um, between, and you can read in the books, you read mm -hmm. Dr. King's book, you read even Reverend Sharpton's book, and different individual male leaders and it's very different when you're a woman you're and a mother. In fact, we bring something to the movement that is very special. Mm. Uh, and that is the woman's touch and being able to lead not just from a space of, you know, being a charismatic male voice, but, all, you know, being a woman who has sensitivities and has mm. raised children or, you know, being a part of family. And, you know, us women, we, we know how to do 50 things at one time. Mm. And generally there is behind all these strong, powerful men in the positions they've been in, there have been very, very strong women who were willing to be in the background to help those men, uh, you know, be out front and be strong and have a powerful voice. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that the, the thing is for me, and especially since my son's father was murdered, mm -hmm. my parents helped and there were other people in the support system, but I didn't have anybody else to like leave my responsibility on. I had no choice but to also be engaged every single day of my son's life. And he suffered a lot. I talk about it all the time. How old is he now? He's 23. Oh, wow. He's 23 and a new dad. Wow. Um, and so he, you know, so he's, he's suffered a lot because, of course, I'm running, you know, and my parents are taking care of him. And I'm sure at some point he figured out, like, they don't even know what game I'm playing. They don't know what music mm -hmm. I'm listening to. My parents didn't know anything. They were just, you know, older people trying to help me raise this kid. And he kind of got lost in that. So, you know, it's no joke because I, I, that's the one regret that I have wow. is that I wasn't able to be more of a stable figure in his mm -hmm. life, you know. But still, mothers and fathers, there's two, there's two different roles that we play, and we appreciate both roles. But I never had the, the – I never could be the stay-at-home mom or the mom who was most present. I had to be the breadwinner, mm -hmm. the disciplinarian, mm -hmm. and, and the mom at the same mm -hmm. time. So the personal life is hard. It's hard to manage. But as I'm getting older, I'm training more young people, and they're out there. They're speaking and moving and organizing, and I'm trying to find more ways to invest in me. Your son is 23. He mm -hmm. has a child. He looks so young. Mm -hmm. I, don't I work at that every day. Yeah, yeah. This is my son is in college. Oh, see? I would never think. Yes. Never think. Little, little no, she doesn't. Stop <laughs> it. No, she doesn't. No. Man, she doesn't. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Man. My son. Yes, sir. Kim. My son. Yes, sir. I tell, you, I tell you how much I respect you, right? Um, like what? Yeah, but you, you're doing, you outside. You, you like doing the work, bro. And what I still, and here's the thing, like, at what point, because you've been up here before, and, I'm, and I never asked you, at what point did you know that you wanted to do that? I don't think I know I wanted to do it. I just think it happened. It's like, um, you know, especially being in prison. After you be in prison, you start seeing a lot of different things. And um, knowing, knowing that the system is fucked up. You just, the system is all messed up. Everything about the system is messed up. And you see how they're coming in younger and younger every day. You know, and then you come home and you're looking at, and you start paying attention and be like, this system is dying. 
is pretty much built to send us, send us to jail. Indeed. Right, so when you start noticing those things, and then you come home educated, you get a little more education, right. you come home. So when I came home, my, just my mind frame was a lot different, you know. And as I started to engage in, into the music business, I started seeing a lot of different things in the music business. You know, half of it is fake, and it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. You know, it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. And um, venturing over doing different things, acting and things like that. And I remember my first into the move my first introduction into movement was Trayvon Martin. I was I was in Florida and we were shooting a web series and they were reading the verdict for George Zimmerman on T V and I was in the hotel room and I was getting dressed and I'm like, yeah this he definitely gonna be found guilty of this. This is simple. So I'm getting dressed and when they read that he wasn't guilty, I don't know what it was, man, but I never cried like that before. Mm. You know, my son was about 13 then, and I remember literally tears just falling out of my eyes, and I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I was really, I was so angry like it was my child. Mm -hmm. And then I saw, and I remember kept saying, yo, what do I say to my son? Like, how do I explain what just happened to him? Like, how, like this, so you could just kill our kids, right. and nobody has to be accountable. Right. And I remember that was the first time that I became conscious, and I wrote, a spoken word, I did a video for it, wow. called what, what Do I Say to My Son? And I then, and then after that, I started working with Tamika. And how, how did y'all meet, though? Well, we met, we met at a, a party that Mita had. Her and Mita had did an um, event in with Harlem Shana. with right. Shana, and they had did, and Mita had told me to come, like, yo, we giving out um, toys mm -hmm. in Harlem. So, you know, she always calls, so I'm like, right, well, I'm coming. And then um, Tamika was there. <laughs> And um, we just started vibing. She was just talking about, you know, what she did and what I did. And at that time, I was doing personal training, too. Mm -hmm. So I started personal training her. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, she okay. wanted to work, so I started personal training. So and then she wasn't, her. You wasn't, you wasn't there yet? No, nah, I wasn't. I was, she had, she heard the thing that I did for Trayvon Martin and then introduced me to Carmen Perez, who ran Harry Belafonte's who organization. Runs. She runs. currently, that's currently right. runs. That's right. And then I started going to detention centers and working with the kids in the detention centers. And that's when Eric Garner got choked. And that was the first rally I ever went to. We left the detention center, i never forget it. We walked out of the detention center and everybody, and she was like, and Carmen was on her phone like, yo, you see how they choked this man? We calling a rally. And I had never been to a rally before. So I'm like, all right. And we went to 42nd Street and I've never seen that many people in the middle of the street. And that was the first, and right in that, that moment. That was the verdict, right? No, that was that when was Eric Garner first got choked. This is when they first showed the video. It wasn't no verdict. Because I remember the verdict. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I think it was. You when, sure it was the verdict? Yeah, I'm pretty I even went, sure. I even went outside. When the yeah, it was when Daniel Pantaleo didn't yeah. get charged. Right. That's it when was? it was. So that's when that's it was. That's because it was in the winter time in December. It was. It was okay, in, so it was for the verdict. I even went out there. Yeah. 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 I was Everybody like watching. Yeah, I was outside. Yeah, that was. Yeah. So you're right. That was. It was in December. It was right. But I was thinking you were right, but it was in December. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, yeah, it wasn't when he first got choked. Yeah, it was that. It was that. It was it was like a slap in the face. And that was the Everybody first rally I ever went to, and that's when I was like, you know what? This is what I need to be doing. Yeah, because people, the misconception is often that, like, you know, well, it's not a misconception. It's a lie they tell to try to discredit my son specifically. It's like he just was trying to find something to do. You know what I mean? And he wasn't find like, a way to be a, like a to, right? Like he was trying to like find, find a way yeah. to to yeah. make money and whatever. And he really wasn't. It was me that I listened to his because while we were training, he used to play his music right. and he played that particular piece. And I was like, what is that? And I, I I tell everybody that what really started him working with Carmen is that they had been taking me with them to the jails. Mm -hmm. And I was in there talking and the kids was looking at me like, mm -hmm. like that was cute. <laughs> but it wasn't doing, it wasn't, that wasn't. That was <laughs> like, she's like, cute okay, and you know, but know, like, okay, mm, right, sure. okay. not really. Exactly, but it was yeah. not changing. <laughs> it wasn't changing anyone's <laughs> life at right. all. And I know that, I don't, I don't, my ego is not so big that I feel like, oh no, I can't believe. No, so when I heard his music, I'm like, wow, like you need to go with us. like. 
we going to put you on the tour going to the to jails around the city and I know that you're going to be like mm -hmm. inspirational so Carmen started working with him and she was taking him so that was like one thing happening mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily the movement from the perspective right. of like being out there protesting right, against right, right. you know police start. that was just one entry and then you know he went to the rally with Carmen and that's how he got involved right criticism y'all yeah, fall under a lot of criticism <laughs> I see people going at Mike Miller all the time I see him going back and forth with a couple dudes I haven't seen y'all both be, be criticized what do you got to say to people that even though like the whole Black Lives Matter um, it's been a lot said right mm -hmm. it's been a lot said it's been a lot said about you you know they even uh, uh, you know try to say that y'all stole money and used the money to go buy you know Range Rovers and shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a ring. Well, I had one, but I don't have a Range Rover anymore. But I don't even know where that came with that from. Like, <laughs> right, right, like right. what? Like I hear new ones all the time. Right, right, you know, right. and, you know, and it, and it's so crazy. Like I would not normally say this, but just because we're sitting here and we're right. on the topic, right. my Range Rover came as a gift from my multi-millionaire boyfriend. Multi, 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 <laughs> right? It's my multi, multi. He was the he he had the largest <laughs> the largest advertising agency for blacks and Latinos in the country. He is a legend. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was my boyfriend for eleven years, and mm -hmm. he bought me a Range Rover mm -hmm. Cash Clear. So people don't know what the hell they they don't talk, they don't know what you're talking just about stuff. just because it's not on the internet doesn't right. mean that people right. don't have a life going on right. behind the scenes. I don't understand right. why they always equate like when you're for the people like you're supposed to just look piss poor. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't right. I don't get yeah. that part where it's just mm. like good point. oh well since mm. you are yeah. for the people that means that you're supposed to look a certain type of way you can't because we're paying or we're contributing. So that money that we're contributing must be going to supporting you in wearing nice things. Why can't I wear nice things? Why right. can't I live the life that I want? And do live? other things and, and other have things. But you know, <laughs> be for you. But George, like, you know what the problem is with that? The people who actually support us don't think that. Mm -hmm. They think that you should have nice things. They don't. Everybody who is criticizing have never contributed <laughs> or done nothing for you, right? Because when I when I'm invested, because I I say all the time, don't. Don't we? I don't like donations, investments. Invest in the work that we do. If you think that we're doing the right work and you want to see it continue, invest. I don't want donations. I don't want charity. I don't want none of that. And when I don't, when I put my money into something, it's because I believe in the person. I don't want nobody that represents me that is is one of our supposed leaders to be out here looking flabby and sick and broke. Yeah. Why do we? Why? Why do we? <laughs> why want, are we fighting for that? Yeah, like why do we want that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a point. Mm -hmm. The people that's throwing rocks. Live in glass houses anyway. Yeah. yeah. They not even they not even involved in no in nothing. Nowhere, right? I always say I always say tell if you tell me the person if you a person that has invested in, in, in us or something and you have a, a critique or a question, I answer. But don't tell me you just mad and you on the sideline and you never invested in nothing in it. I don't owe you an explanation about nothing. And I think accountability is important. Right? Like I But I accountability I to who? Well, I mean, I think it, it, when you say that you speak on behalf of a particular group of people or issues within a particular family, if you will, there people have the right to ask you, well, explain this to me or why did you take this position on this thing mm -hmm. or, you know, how come, you know, I see today you say you for this, but then I see you over here. It doesn't it don't match like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged with it. And we have people who ask us those questions all the time and we engage, we have conversations and sometimes we still not going to agree, but generally people who are authentically asking, they can walk away saying, okay, I don't, I don't like that. Like, I don't get with that, but that doesn't mean I'm going to throw the whole baby right. out with the bathwater. You know what I'm saying? And even me, I have, I ask questions, mm -hmm. right? Like when the situation happened with Black Lives Matter and the houses and all of that, I was texting like, hey, help me understand. One, oh, is that the person that they said took the money? Yeah, nobody, nobody ever says she took a dime. That's the thing. What did they say? So the, what they do mm -hmm. is they write headlines a certain way mm -hmm. so that when you read it, you're confused about what's really right, being I'm, said. I'm confused. They said she bought a house for $6 million. First of all, what they tried, and it's so they're so good at what they do. What they They've been doing the same thing the for ye, forever and ever and ever and ever. Any person that 
is leading a movement that raises any type of money or that's some type of threat, you in the newspaper for stealing the black or community. something. Because because only the black, black Yeah, for black people. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what happened was the first story they came out with was that she had all of these properties in her name, mm. right? And so they were trying to say that the reason why she had these houses, a $1 million house in L.A., which we know in L.A., a $1 million house, that's no money for a house. Mm -hmm. So she had this house and that house and her mother and brother lived in one and her family, you know, whatever. So they were saying that, you know, that was because she was taking money from the organization. But then they went through the records of the organization mm -hmm. and she and she said she never collected a salary. Mm -hmm. She is a speaker that, you know, she speaks at schools. She's a professor. Mm -hmm. She has a deal with Warner Brothers, um, some type of content deal. I don't know. So, the, the, so the ladies the out there making money and what in her mindset, it, and I know her, so I've had these conversations with her so I can say it. Mm -hmm. She's a person that believes go buy property, right? Like yeah. they're like some right, people, that's right, what they do. Right, some people yeah. they think it's stocks, other people right, save right. their mm -hmm. cash in the bank. Like everybody mm -hmm. has different, right. everybody's got their right. thing. Right. So from her mindset, it's buy property right. so you can keep your money tucked right. somewhere and grow right so she was buying properties i think she was be, you know pretty smart right. she never really collected a major salary from the organization at all so when that story died and was really nothing they could do with it the next thing they found out was that the they so black lives matter the organization had a six million dollar property and people went crazy. So I asked too, because me, if it were me, and she and I have had this conversation, mm -hmm. it's not a secret, I would have bought a building, hired 24-hour lawyers, 24-hour hotline where you could call, get help, mm -hmm. get lawyers, get this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. And I probably would have, we, and Until Freedom, we would have had a building in New York, in Atlanta, somewhere mm -hmm. else. That's what we would have done, mm -hmm. right, first. One, because you already know perception is reality. So you know people going to be thinking, you did something wrong, so you have to make sure your, your first thing you do is this. But again, think about the mindset of this person. A hundred million dollars comes in, mm -hmm. she's automatically thinking we need to buy property, have an endowment, try to make sure this money lasts and that it lives. The property wasn't in her name. It was Black Lives Matter's property. It's still in their name, the name of the organization. She's gone and they still own the property. Wow. But the way that the articles are written, she bought a house. Well, what do you mean she bought a house? She did a transaction because she's the head of the organization, mm -hmm. but the house was never in her name. It still belongs to an organization. And what's most important is that the, they tell you all of this about a $6 million house, which again, I still could, we, I would not have done that first. Mm -hmm. But guess what they don't tell you? Mm -hmm. She gave, they, her and her, her organization, the group, they gave away $34 million dollars to grassroots organizations and or families who've been impacted by violence, by police or other types of violence. They did that at the same time. So they, they raised $100 million. They, gave, focusing on they, they gave away $34 million and they bought a $6 million house. But the house isn't being used for anything. The house, well, the, the purpose, of, because they if you, you know, the they're, money they're money very, that they could continue yeah, and, to raise money for black lives. Right. Yeah, so they have, them. because you, right. because today you have money and tomorrow they don't like you and you don't, right? right? Yeah. So it was an investment property, but in the property they have like, a, it's a studio for them to be able to do things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, they had like a, a, I think it was like a center. I'm not in the organization, so I'm just going by what they told me and what I was able to piece together. They have a, a place where like people could go there, activists who may need a place to stay, people having mental breakdowns, because we do, we go through that trauma. So they had, it was set up for an artsy community, a safe yeah. space, that's a perfect, that's what it perfect was. That's way. The that's the exactly, it's like a safe house, right. right? So I get it, people could have an issue with it, and you could ask, because I asked, and I also gave my critique of the mm -hmm. order in which things happen, but the pushback is, and, and it's in the records. There are articles out there if people would actually do the reading. It says $34 million was given to organizations and grassroots groups, and they still have been giving money even since she's been gone. They didn't give us no money mm -hmm. until freedom, which we right. have requested. That's, that's your, that's your <laughs> we applied. <laughs> yes, we did. Why, why didn't you, uh, why did y'all never want to become a part of that movie? Because we didn't start it. It's a, it's a, so, there's, so there's movements and then there's organizations. Exactly. 
and people have to understand the difference. And, you know, they, they, I mean, one thing about it is that we are always going to be, because people come up to me and say, oh, God, what happened with that house? Y'all bought a house and you didn't. I'm like, bro, I don't got nothing to do. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they tell me every day I'm Black Lives Matter. Black, Black. Where the money? They Black. All my pay. You read, wow. like, where's, at least five times a day, <laughs> where's the I money did. at? At some point. What y'all yeah. did with the yeah. money? Yeah. Wow, she said really? she thought that. You did? Yeah. But you know what the reality is, and I say this all the time, and it's not any disrespect or no shade to anybody. A lot of people who invested and donated to Black Lives Matter thought they was no, they giving did. it to us. Yeah. And I know that. Really? That's why we you know asked the money from we, the organization, because it's our money and we know it. Because the time that we was doing all the work, no, the George we, Floyd, we, and we, we was doing all the work with Breonna Taylor, process. this is when everybody was raised, and we was the main people on the front line doing yeah, all this like, work. If you think about the people who were advocating, it was y'all. So a lot so. of people thought that they was investing so. in us, and it went. But you asked a question that has to be answered, because it's a good question, because mm -hmm. people want to know, what's the difference? So there is the statement, Black Lives Matter, you believe that. That's you believe everybody. You believe right. that, right? So that's a statement. Right. That's a movement. Everybody Kanye got behind got a shirt it. On the day, said white lives matter. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it is what it is. But you know the, 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 the movement, no, no, no. the 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 um the movement mm -hmm. got behind that. Like that, that is a movement, a worldwide right. movement right. that started because these women, three women, got together and said Black Lives Matter. Mm. So if they never started an organization, Black Lives Matter would still be a thing. But then they went and professionalized their operation and they created an organization called Black Lives Matter. So there's no space for us in that because we weren't a part of it. We was not we weren't at the table. That's so we, their we're always a part of the Black Lives Matter movement, but the Black Lives Matter organization that raised the money is those people's money. Right. We ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah. Who are the faces? Like you see like y'all just said how people would uh, can like make confuse y'all with being the people for Black Lives Matter, right? Mm -hmm. So they would associate y'all with that. I can't remember, I can't even think about who is the face of Black Lives Matter. That's a, you know, that's a, okay, so it, it you know, I want to try to not to be long-winded, but it is another one of those areas when I start, when I was talking earlier about women leading movements. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for us to get the same recognition. I am, a very, it's a, what do you call it, an anomaly? An anomaly, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, I have, I have been uh, supported in a way that I'm in the forefront and people see me. And mm -hmm. it is the time of the woman. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm in, but still, I know the difference between, since I've worked for men as leaders all my life, I know the difference between how they are respected and what mm -hmm. happens with male mm -hmm. leaders and women leaders. Right. I know it, but I'm not arguing about it because I still understand God has blessed me and put me in a position and gave me a voice and people mm -hmm. respect me and I have a powerful presence mm -hmm. and voice. So Amen. I got that. But there are other, they, as women, when you're leading movements, it's easy to be sort of overlooked or not seen as, you know, the, the person out front, mm -hmm. especially if you, are, you don't look a certain way. And it's very unfortunate, but it's the truth. So, you know, as these women are leading the movement and some of their ideals and their principles and what they stand for is very different from what people are used to in the movement. You, you know, you're used to a black, a straight or heterosexual is the right word, mm -hmm. black male leader, right. whether they were heterosexual for real or behind the scenes right. or yeah. whatever yeah. people got going on. on. That's what right. it appeared to be. And all of these women... Uh, not all of them, but at least two of the three women, they are and represent the LGBTQIA community. So that can also cause reasons for people to overlook you um, and to and or to shun you. You know, so there's a lot of things with that as women that we deal with in terms of being in the forefront. So that may be one of the reasons why you don't necessarily know. I don't I don't like it's, it's funny that, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, and y'all are heavily associated with that, and I can't think of nobody else that is. Well, no, they're doing it to us on purpose. This is not by happenstance. We blew up. I saw you on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> you blew up. Yeah, but this right? is not by chance that we're being associated with it. The problem that people have to understand is most of what we think about, the way we think, the way we view, unless you are a person who goes against the grain and you're able to sit and process for yourself and you do a lot of reading and research, you're going you're gonna to believe what the media is constantly 
pushing on you. Right. And if you don't realize that the internet is ha at least half, probably more than half, people that are fake profiles, people, you know, posturing, all kinds of, so they're feed, they know, they read me and you. You and I get into an argument. That's why I tell my son to stop arguing with these people. Because he's <laughs> arguing with people that's not even a real, I'm a lot like, better. It's, it's, I'm, yeah, I'm a lot better. Still, I'm getting just, better. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, he just goes back and forth. I'm like, bro, you bugging. I'm, I'm a lot better. <laughs> trying to make sense of something, right? That and don't make wanna, sense. Right. And, and the issue is, Man, you, you know. want to make sense. And you want, you're like, hold on, this don't make sense. You want to explain yourself yeah. and what, what happens and you wind up talking to fools because it's like you arguing with fools you, and, and the onlookers, the spectators, just want to see a show anyway. Right. And what's happening is, is so it's more than even a show because what happens is you and I get into it on the yeah. internet. These trolls, they, they're, they're called uh, troll farms right mm -hmm. they are watching what is what you're saying so if you come on in and you like tamika you're a fraud mm -hmm. because why are you walking around with a birkin right <laughs> let's not forget the birkin right <laughs> 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 Let's you. not forget the red Birkin. <laughs> yeah. Why are you walking around with a Birkin? And you say that to me. And a bunch of people are like, word, that's what I'm saying. Only for no no leader has that amount of bag. What happens with the Twitter, the Twitter farms? These are basically white supremacists, right? Mm -hmm. Or they want to be supremacists. I have to make sure we correct that, mm -hmm. right? They're people who want to be supreme to mm -hmm. us. They are racist. Right. They see what you and I are talking about, and they like, oh, that's what they get mad about so they go and they set up their farm to start tweeting the price of birkins they stealing da, 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 and it starts pumping out trigger, and now your trigger, comment trigger. section has so much of that in there wow. or there's articles being written Maybe about it and that is in your mind so do you think that they also purposely associate certain things with you because of how strong your voice is Oh, this it's all about discredit. Anybody that they feel like is going to be unapologetically black, mm -hmm. they're going to change. You, you're going to experience them coming after you. And they associate you. It's very technical for them. It's mm -hmm. not even as emotional as we think. Mm -hmm. They need you to be under certain hashtags. Fraud. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. thief. Mm -hmm. Certain things. So they put you so in agenda. conversations. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you guys need to read mm -hmm. the... New York Times article that came out two Sunday, three, anyway, a few weeks ago. It's a New York Times article that talks about Russian, the Russian bots and what they did to the Women's March. Because, you know, that's like one of the first really big national pro platforms that I was on mm -hmm. was the Women's March, which was all the white ladies with the yeah. pink hat and mm -hmm. around the world, you know, five million women marched, not just white women, um, but they were sort of the beginning of it. So in that situation the new york times what they did they 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 started looking at all the tweets that were out there against us and particularly this one woman that we worked with linda sarsour they really went after her so the new york times did an, uh they had for several months people researching mm -hmm. how why did all of these what was all of this twitter activity about and they found that it was russian bots behind it so this is like very deliberate. They're mm -hmm. sitting back and there's someone on the U.S. side, believe it, mm -hmm. that's basically in working with these right. people to yes. try to destabilize movements. And they're using their Twitter farms to go after us. So part of the things that you see a million times, they, they bought a house, they bought a house, they're frauds, they're doing this, they're doing that. They want that it to be in the algorithm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the algorithm, yeah. that's like keywords right. that mm -hmm. it's just going to... Right. It's just gonna and your face pop up every time they say that. And your face is on, they put your picture on it, and anyone else's that they feel like people, you, you too real, people believe in you too much. Because, you know, they have made... If you go to my son's page and look at the comments and just <laughs> click the comments, I promise you... You really? will see how many of those people that are in his comments, they're around. not real profiles. Mm -hmm. wow, yeah. Wow. You ever, you, ever, yeah. you ever get, like, tired of it? <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, I'm doing a lot better. Like, before, I, did, I used to get it more. Because, you know, we about principal. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my reputation, my resume, all of it. Like, that means mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. My name means a lot. So, when, when I used to see that, and, like, you just can't play with my name. But then I realized... As you move into different spaces, it's not real life. It ain't even real. Like especially on the internet, none of that is real. I don't. I go outside. We go outside. People running up to right, you, hugging right, you. Right, I love right, you. You right, the realest. Right. 
everywhere yeah, I go. Yeah. I'll be like, where's these never, dudes? Never one, thing, I, one thing for certain, you never, never run into an internet troll. I never. <laughs> when you said that on the internet, I said, I said, yo. I, that's what I said. I said, yo. Y'all don't right. even really exist. I like, do. That's the sad part. For you, me, it's you, a little. You run into internet trolls? That, it, remember a lady? Yeah, we did one. Yeah. Yeah. One time. One time. No, it's not one time for me. Uh, well, I was there. Well, I was there with one time. No, it's different for me. It's just different for me. My son is dealing with a bunch of ignorant black folks. Like, right. that's what he's dealing with. And they, some of them are real people, too, but whatever, that's different. But me, when the white supremacist is on my thing, mm -hmm. they, be, they used to come to my speaking engagements. Like, mm -hmm. show up and be mm -hmm. protesting and having guns outside. Like, it's a different, no, that was, that, it's yeah, a different vibe. They would come inside? Yes, what do you mean? In the middle of a speaking engagement, they jump up and be like, no, audacity. she's a racist. Yeah, they used to do that. Yeah. No, that did You got to stay really like strong and like knowledgeable when you're an activist too. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like like you're talking about now, like they really do things to just creep into your emotions and pick, get like these reactions out of like big groups of people and get their agenda going. Mm -hmm. And like, it's so easy to get misconstrued mm -hmm. in all of it. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much information out there and like, you know, other generations will be like, oh, you have all the information, information you need. Yeah, but like you have to really sift through like misinformation and real information and what's what. Like, mm -hmm. and how do you guys, being on the forefront, like do that so, so uh, effectively? Because your word is it. Like, Effectively, you know. I don't know about that. <laughs> like I keep telling you, it's, I'm, I'm getting better and better at it. You know, I'm moving into a space. I'm studying, you know, different leaders and just understand, especially in this movement, when you look that all of them was attacked and dealt with the same thing. Every movement. Every was movement was attacked. And then when you start realizing that, you like, this will come with. This is what come with it. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta stay the course and, and understand what the purpose is. And just keep moving in that, man. But it, uh, sometimes, you know, you get a little derailed every now and then. But I'm you getting better. You have um, moments where you might feel like scared? Scared is, you know, I don't know. I'm more afraid of my mental, like, st stability losing hold of that than I am somebody killing me. I've already decided that. This, that's my, that may be my destiny, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that is what it is. When you know for sure that at any moment your life could be taken and it's nothing. I can have 50 security people, which we do. Sometimes when we're out, we have to have major security and we have a great security team, um, seen and unseen. But you can't stop somebody from blowing your brains out. You just can't. It can happen exactly. just like that. People have been stabbed. People have been shot. People, all of that has happened. So you have to you have to accept that because if you walk around scary in that way, you can't be an effective leader. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you could be effective every day worrying about what's this mm -hmm. and what's that. One thing though, if I'm speaking and people start moving, I will stop in the middle. I don't care. I could be at the Carnegie Hall speaking in front of thousands. If you start moving, I'm like, nah, you got to everybody has to stop moving because that is something that triggers me. But other than that, I'm not scared. But the mental stability piece, I do worry about. So one of the things that I've had to stop doing is watching traumatic videos. Mm -hmm. I do sometimes because I have no choice. Like right now, there's a video that's on my page of a woman by the name of Pamela Turner um, who was shot while on the ground. She was mentally um, you know, unstable. Uh -huh. And the officer lived in her community, knew she had issues, and he still shot her several times while she was on the ground and wasn't a threat to him. And so that's a video that I had to post because, you, you know, that's an older woman that was just killed, like, for no reason. And I needed to be able to connect it with people so they can really feel and understand the depth of what took place. Mm -hmm. But might so be like, yo, this is ridiculous. Look at this video. I mean, just look. And I tell him, I can't, I can't do it because mm -hmm. my mind can't take. I've been doing this longer than him. Mm -hmm. I can't take death, murder, kill all, all the death. time, yeah. all the time. It's too much for me. And then it, it keeps me hyped, mm -hmm. can't sleep, um, you know, and I'm like, I'm not doing enough. We failing, this mm -hmm. and that. It gives like me, yeah. oh, man. Like, oh, man, oh, man. Let me, let me ask you, with the movement, what, what is your specific agenda? What is the goal? Yeah, you know, there's lots of goals, I think, but racial equity is the sort of like at the center of, our conversation every day. And what does that mean? It means that we want to see not black people have as much, but we need to be in a, a position where we can thrive even beyond 
what is expected and what other people may have, right? And I, there's this meme that I, um, I I saw one day. You may have sent it to me. I don't know, but it shows like if you have a white person who's already on a higher level, and then we equality means we'll give them, we'll put three bricks under them and three bricks under us, right? And then so what happens is, is still they up, we all, we go like this. We never come like this. Equity means that you stop giving them and give us so that we can come to the same level. And so we fight for that. We fight for racial equity. We fight for, you know, economic uh, repair to our community. And reparations is a term that people are scared to use. But we are fighting for us to have justice and reparations and you know and and that means fighting for the issues right under it which is voting rights and mm -hmm. you know to stop violence and police violence and all of that in our communities but ultimately we want to see black folks particularly but black and brown people have racial equity people will say you know have equity, equity. let me take out racial mm -hmm. that yeah we see our uh, um on the front line George Floyd, you know, this, that, but where y'all at on black on black? <laughs> That's a funny I know y'all hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah. What do you say to that? I, I, you know. Well, I mean. <laughs> they, 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 they go at you. Yeah, my son, what you got to say to that? Well, I mean. <laughs> because they just shot up a school, like, like, they just shot up the block. Little girl got hit with, like, or, but I see you speaking on stuff like that. You cow culture. I see that. And I created a whole movement, a whole boycott black murder campaign against right. it. You know what I'm saying? King Stop Killing Kings right. was the whole movement that we started that I deal with a lot of the violence interrupters and go into the communities and, and deal with a lot of the youth and, and, you know, mentor a lot of the youth. So that's the thing that we're doing every day. But we can't really do that until we have equity. You know, mm. if, if we, if the reason why street is because they're poor. Ain't nobody that got money outside like, yo, we're going to have violence. Poverty is violence. So until we change the conditions of the people, we can't change the conditions of the people. I can keep having conversations with these young boys every day like, yo, you can't do this. But if I don't have something, for them to do. exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Y'all got to invest in these communities. That's why when we say defund the police, they get mad. No, the, the police got hundreds of millions of dollars. Give us 30 or 40 of those that we can put into our community, give us, um, you know, different resources, give us programs for these kids, give them things, let's pay some of these kids. If, if I can't grab the young gangbang on the corner and say, yo, look, man, I'm going to give you about $1,500 a week to make sure nobody gets shot out here. You get two or three more of your minutes, we're going to pay. You make sure people are safe out here. This is your block. This is, if it's your block, then people should be safe. If I could go to the hood with that, you know, you, it'd be easy. But I can't go there and just be like, yo, just stop. Nah, give us the resources. That's what I'm telling you. Invest in Boycott Black Murder. Give us the resources. We go into the communities. I'm going to take the young dudes, or OGs, all of the people in the community that want to stop the violence and, and it's in instrumental in it and pay them and give them something else to do. And we know that the model works because you know Erica Ford, you know A.T. Mitchell, you know these individuals. So we know what they have been able to do. I was one of the one one of the people who helped to start what they are doing, right? Mm -hmm. We the three of us, Erica, AC, and myself, we came together and we started a program in New York called the Crisis Management System, and we built this thing that at one point we were able to fight to get five million dollars for grassroots organizations, but it's now over a hundred million dollars that the city invests in grassroots groups in the Bronx and everywhere. My son works with a bunch of them, Guns Up, Life Down. I mean, you work yeah, with so groups, many of them, yeah, so many yeah. groups, right? Before the pandemic, because you can't measure anything after the pandemic. First mm -hmm. of all, people have mentally lost it completely. We are in a whole, we got to do a lot to get people's mental stability back in order after being locked out, locked in, mm -hmm. all the stuff that happened to us during the pandemic. And, and just a lot of financial issues, because you had a lot of dudes that was getting money during from these checks and this and the government and blah 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 now there's no money you know what i'm saying so there's a lot of that going on but before the pandemic if you look at the data the data proves very clearly that violence was down when those organizations were functioning at their top you know at their best 
because they were able to provide jobs and resources. They have kids. They, they find the kids that are problematic and they bring them in immediately. They, and they're going for the worst of the worst, the shooters, the ones that's always in trouble. These are the kids that AT and others work with every single day. Right. Those kids, they we meet them. They 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 the cameraman mm -hmm. right. on the set at the but, event. But that's what they need to be. That exactly. is what they need. They need the opportunity. They doing yeah. they doing the Twitter, right. the YouTube yeah. videos, yeah. 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 and they you know that's that's what they do. So we but we know it, we know what works, and other people know also. But they choose to keep investing in policing. And my son said, don't you know give us thirty million of the hundred million. We're saying don't give them any more money. The police, they do not need another dime. They are the most well-resourced institution in America, the police. They get money all the time. They got training money. They have all types of investments. But we don't have mental health services. Right? You go in certain communities, go to, if you go to the projects right now, do the, the little, you know, the little rooms that used to be open. What do they call those community rooms? Centers. Recreation center, in, in, community center. In the, in the lobby of the room, of the building, yeah. Yeah. you could go to tenant association. Yeah. You could go yeah. in there, but yeah. back in the days, mm -hmm. and you could ask for stuff like, "Oh, my yeah. mom's going through this or that," and they, and they had. I know because my parents used to hang mm -hmm. out in there. They mm -hmm. organized out of those. All of that's closed. All the community centers are closed. And they're, they're, uh, taking away some of the after school students. Yeah. No, not all of the programs. Gone. There's, There's no program. The social no, workers are gone. Yeah, well, they, I work at a they program. Don't invest Where's it at, babe? In Red Hook, Brooklyn. Okay. They don't invest in prevention. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. You know, um, I had a conversation with the mayor. Um, that's another question I wanted to ask you, which I thought about the mayor. Mm -hmm. But I had a conversation with him, and, and we, we talked about the music, we talked about the drill rap and that, that whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Drill rap. And my whole thing to him was we needed to have realistic conversations, right? Because, you know, uh, locking, you know, these young kids up, kids up, just locking them all up, you know, is not the answer because mm -hmm. all we're going to do is, is continue to produce more criminals, more gangbangers, more gangbangers. Um, as long as you have a ghetto, as long as you have underfunded um, uh, neighborhoods, impoverished neighborhoods, inner cities. It's always going to be crime. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we, we got to start dealing with that. Mm -hmm. You know, that exactly. the prevention, not the cure. You just put in the bandage. Oh, you just shot somebody. So I sent them to jail. Lock all the up. Put them all in prison. They tried that. Mm -hmm. They did that they already. That. They tried that. Like in, in, the, in the 90s, they built more jails, right? They built more prisons. They put uh, uh, more cops on, they hired more cops in the city, right? But does it really work, mm -hmm. right? So. Where's the prevention? Where's the, the community centers that we're talking about? Where's the That's not where the money is, though, man. Right. They need the money. They need the money. The money goes. That's where the money is incarceration. The money, right. The, the more money. people that's incarcerated, the more money they make. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, we fund the system. Right. Poverty Literally. funds the system. We Literally. we we fund the the, the two percent. So this is what the bottom line is. If they invest in cleaning up communities, capitalism will destroy. Mm. We, the capitalism is built on the fact that there's a lower class. So without the lower class, capitalism can't survive. So we, 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 they, know what, they know what it is. They know exactly what it is. They know when, when as soon as you, just like, because rap proves it, right? Nine out of ten times after these kids be four or five years out of the streets, they go and get them a nice little house. Don't want no problems. Yeah. I'm staying away right. from you. The yeah. crew you get yeah. good. Nobody don't right. want no problems. Right. 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 But when you in the belly of the beast and you you got to figure out how to survive and you got to right. eat and all this, this right. is, this becomes your reality. Right. Right. So if you don't change exactly, if we don't change those conditions, we can't change the conditions. So uh, about the mayor, you know, I had the same conversation mm -hmm. with the mayor, you know, and I and I actually put a proposal and I'm waiting for him to you know about boycott black murder, what what it looks like, you know, what I'm saying like. They need to see violence interrupters. They need to see people who are doing the positive things look like rappers, right? Give us all the same platforms. Give the, make, make, let me have these young dudes doing positive things. Let me give them some chains. Let me give them a car. Let me and It'll promote them. That, yeah, I, but that's what the problem is. Then you're never going to stop what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't make the people who, the nonviolent ones and cool, if you don't make that trendy, Mm. Then you can't compete. Don't sit there and, 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 and you know pat me on the back 
in the yo, I love what you do, man. Every one of these radio stations, D everybody, yo, I love what you do. I right, well, give me the same platform that you're giving to everybody else, right? Let me take a few of these young dudes and show them that this works the same you way. You said something very important. You said make them make them look cool, right? Mm -hmm. You got you have to. I always believe that you got to come to the people as a people. I need you to explain what you what you mean by that, as far as having a certain look. Right, and being able to, to relate to your people and, and, and have them respond to what you're saying. So you, so you don't think that a person's appearance, right, he's trying to talk to these young dudes and it's like, what I'm listening to you for. Exactly. Look at you. That's the bottom line. You're like, you need a job. You're like, you need help. You don't, you don't, like, you're not wearing the shit that I like. You ain't. That's important. That's they important. Need, need Fat relatable. Joe said that the other day. He's like, they only respect the bag. If you don't, if you can't show these young kids that they can get the bag doing something positive, then you can't get mad at them for doing something negative. Yeah. But, but, you, but you also got to be looking yeah. the part. Exactly. You be looking like you need a favor. Because they're going to look exactly. like you got all of that and you did this. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you and and you ain't got to risk your life. I ain't got to run right. from the like, police. Way. And, right. and I think it's also who you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are confused about us. Like they think, so I have to say all the time, my parents, friends, mm -hmm. I'm not, they're not, that's not my target mm -hmm. market. I'm not trying to reach them. Mm -hmm. I need them to be allies with me, like stand with me. We work together. Maybe y'all, you know, invest some resources in our work and mm -hmm. be there to give me guidance and all of that. I'm not trying to get my friends, because my friends, all of them, they got it going on. They, they got jobs, cars, mm. homes, this mm. and that. They working on families. I'm, that's also not my target market. I, my, I'm specifically targeting Keisha that's on a stripper pole at night. That's who I want. That's if I, if my legacy, when I close my eyes and they say, what did Tamika Mallory do? I want to know that women who really, that had three babies and two baby daddies in prison, one that mm. was killed, that those were the women who saw me as being an inspiration, right? right? So, yeah, there are some kids you could be, you could look any kind of way, and just the fact that you're there to talk to them, that matters to them. Mm -hmm. That's going to help them. They're going to be like, okay, cool. You know, Mr. Ricky is here. He's showing me the way, and I appreciate that. But we're talking about my son is working on a population that, unfortunately, they're attracted to certain things because that's what's in their music. Right. That's what th that's they're what taking. They're, they're yeah. taking pills yeah. and, you know, drugs and all kinds of things. Unfortunately, they mind. They're not even necessarily thinking clear. So he has to have a certain marketing tool mm. to be able to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Not every kid is like that. You got some mm. kids, they might be in the church every week, mm -hmm. but they still kind of trying to, you know, see about mm -hmm. what's going on outside. So again, Mr. Ricky can help them because he's showing them he's stable, he's dead. Listen, I can help you. I'm going to put you in this program. But when you're dealing with another type of kid, I like to say Ray Ray, but I don't want to typecast Ray Ray, but I say <laughs> Ray Ray all the time. And I love you, Ray Ray. It's not, it's not personal. But when you... <laughs> But when you are not meant to be negative, but when you're trying to get Ray Ray, that's already a shooter, he already has a few bodies or at least working on one right now, mm. he's not trying to listen to Mr. Ricky. He's just not. Yeah. Now, Mr. I wasn't Ricky, trying to listen to Mr. Mr. Ricky is an important, and Mr. Ricky is an important, because I don't want anybody to walk away from this not understanding. Mr. Ricky is an important partner for my son, because my son also needs mentorship from somebody who works in the community and understands the right way to go and can help you get connected and get you to talk to the city council person and mm. da, 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 and all of that. So we all have to work together. There's no separation in a community. Every single element, the pastor, the business leaders, True everybody too. got, it's holistic. We all working together. But the face, the marketing tool, the representation has to look a certain way in order to get to the, uh, the, the, the people who are right. considered to be the worst of ours. Right. Yeah. And they they're try. not the worst of ours, but mm -hmm. that's, you know. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's, it's, you have a certain level of uniform, yeah. right? And certain trinkets that you have that, that attracts, you know, the, 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 young, the younger ones. It's marketing. Right. Marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so you say something mm -hmm. like that. Like, mm -hmm. they I know what you like mean. <laughs> <laughs> they like that. They listen to you a little bit. <laughs> and then you know what? The, I'm sorry to, to, but this is, it's such act like they don't understand why the hell do you wear the best suit you have to a business meeting? Same Because you're trying to get 
folks in the meetings to stop and listen to you and respect you. Yeah. Why do we, some of us women, wear a little, you know, cut it down a little shorter? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When we go, you know, you're going for a little something. Yeah. You are, you yeah. know, you're a yeah. little more like, because yeah. we know whoever's sitting across with the so-and-so, <laughs> yeah. and sometimes Miss So-and-so might be like, okay, I want her on my team because mm. she look a certain way. Right. It can yeah. work. And you said your watch. Like, come on, let's stop. The parents, it's very important <laughs> it in very life, important. right? Like it's, it's, you know, it's this thing we say, never look like you need a favor even if you need one, right? Mm. You, you can't show up to a, to a place looking like, especially in our community, mm. in, our, in, our, in our culture, right? We can't be looking like we need help, right? You know, when they came in here, man, they look crazy, they look dusty. Man. That, I'm not going to attract anything. I'm not going to attract any potential business looking like I need help. Look, <laughs> I, he just walked in here looking like he needs to be fed. But, it, but if you have certain things, then it, it allows you to attract, you know, uh, whether it's, it's, it's better business, um, if you're able to speak to these, some of the young kids because you know, it's like, yo, yo, damn, all those big on me, oh, I see you dripping. You know, but come here for a minute, let me highlight you. Yeah. It makes that, it makes that the conversation piece. a little bit more mm -hmm. easier. Yeah. Right? right? Yo, what up? Yo, I see you, yo, you be dripping on this and this and that. It, 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 it makes everything more, more easier. So I understand why you got the Rolex. <laughs> no, I get it. This is strictly because I like Rolexes, period. Like, you got about you know four of those. <laughs> no, no, anyway. no, but it's, no. it's, it's, it's yeah. it, it, look, like, like you said, I think. I work hard of course, as you hell. Did, you did Yo, hard. literally you work had. hard as hell. And I'm not, and I, I don't, there's been several speaking engagements in the last few months and I had to tell myself, no, I'm not going if you're not going to pay me because I'm tired and you mm. have money. Harvard, time, Harvard University time. is one of those institutions oh, that every they have so much money. Everybody wants to speak there, but they ask me to do stuff for free because they don't really pay a lot of speakers. Bruh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to miss on that. Y'all have money. Why would I, as a black person who has lived experience, have to come there to explain my story to you and talk about my work and you guys just writing it down and going and making books about it and, you know, putting pamphlets together? And you don't pay me for my time and my intellectual property. And it doesn't, I mean, I think people should speak at Harvard, but I'm just saying, even at that level, I'm at a place in my life. If you call me from the community organization and you ask me to do something for free, I will be there. Right. That's the difference. That's different. It's different. That's different. It's different. No, I mean, it's, it's only right, though. I mean, I think people think, like, when, you, when you're an activist, that you should be one this <laughs> and then not have the Birkin over there. Right? <laughs> and another thing I feel like people think is you, sh you should be perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah that's we that's you going to a whole nother we on we on another topic now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is another show right here. I know they're gonna feel like we're in a bathing suit at some point. Okay, oh, this is like, a whole nother show. Oh. Oh, another show, man. You, you gotta be perfect. perfect. No mistakes, yeah, man. No, no mistakes. Can't yeah. even be human no more. No, no. Um, my son told me one day. He said, "You know what you should do? You should put on a full sweatsuit with a trench coat and go on the beach and take a picture and say, this is how <laughs> I be.' Like, what is wrong with y'all? Yeah. Like, what did y'all expect me to be? Yeah. Yeah. Like, leave me alone. But I also always say that I'm, I'm I, okay. So unfortunately, the leaders of our past didn't have social media, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't know what they wore. What they you don't know what they was doing. They didn't have it, so you don't know what they was doing. They're gonna cuss me know. out. They're gonna be like, oh, he with Maino. <laughs> Man, you know, in the lobby, boys. This is what they represent. Yo. They're going to be like, remember when Mano said? can't wait. <laughs> and I'm like, but Mano is my, Mano is my <laughs> friend, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the bottom line. Like, and, and this is my friend. And you know what I'm saying? And it's that's like the reality. you walk a certain line, yeah, right? Yeah, like, you can't, listen. You can't. Like, you're not just human. Have a, a social, you know, a bone in your body. You can't. You know, do certain things. You can't hang out. They say, "Yo, Mike, yo, we going out tonight. Come, come." Hang I remember out. I was. I told. I told you I was in the strip club, and Self was like, hey, "What you doing here?" Wow. I said the same thing you doing here. Wow. <laughs> 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 the strippers. I like strippers, too. I like strippers. Give me a couple <laughs> drinks. Like, what are you talking no, about? I've been in the strip club before, and not long ago. And oh, this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
You, you was in Chevrolet? Look, no, you can't say that. What are you talking about? She said that's her target audience. I'm, when I'm single, <laughs> I was not saying. I, I, maybe I'm a victim of the same thing that I'm talking about. Because yeah. what I'm saying is, I couldn't. Picture you in the strip club. Child, we, we <laughs> goes out. We <laughs> talk them out. Me and my I'm going to have to take you up on that. We go out. Let me know where you're going. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> you let us know. You got, got you know, it. you got credibility up in these spots out here. <laughs> maybe, maybe too much. <laughs> no, but I was in, in the strip club a few months ago. Maybe it was a year ago or so, and this young lady said, oh, my God, I'm so glad you're here. Can, I just need to go get something from my bag because I need to show you this thing, mm. this and that. We spent like 20 minutes talking wow. about how they're trying to put together a stripper's union wow. so they can have more exactly rights. And, and, and look, that's a, that's a that's shame. <laughs> that's that's a <laughs> you know, and she went and got her file out, you I know, and she was like, I'm so good. Man, I never thought I would see you. I tried to hit, I hit you on DM, but wow. I know it's so many of them. And she's like, now you right here. I could talk to you and tell you this, this, that, and the third. And we had a full conversation and kept in touch, you know? Wow. So, like, we're just regular. The strip club got the best wings in the world. That's what I learned. Hey, listen, I, I'm for the strip club. I'll probably be a part of the union. <laughs> yeah. you know hey, you You know, I'll be a speaker or you know, supporter. A supporter of the you know. union. No, but no, but that's, I think that's, that's, that's just the uh, misconception about, about, about activists and about, you know, what it is. It, it, that got to be hard for you, though. Mm. That has to be hard to battle with, to deal with. Again, mm -hmm. men and women, the difference. Mm -hmm. He could go to the strip club anytime he wants, he's going to be no, fine. But self is like, yo, what you doing? But here? they're not going to write a story about it. It's fine. It's you not a big deal. Let me, let them see, like, think that they got a story. It's a whole thing. But I don't care. So now I don't have to worry about that as much because they're very clear. This girl right here is different. Mm -hmm. She going, mm -hmm. doing what she, I'm not, I'm going to wear my bikini. Right. I'm going to be, go to the club if I want to, any kind of club, not just a strip club, any kind of club. Because guess what? It's some people that don't like that I'm an AKA. They don't like that I'm a link, right? They don't like, all, they don't like the other things that I'm involved in. They say those clubs are too bougie. So I can't do anything right. I'm either too bougie, too radical, too hood, too, it, bro, to I'm just no going to be me. I'm going to just be me. It's working. No matter what Fox you said do. it, man. Yeah. You know they're going to hate you for whatever you do. Yeah. Whatever you do. What about dating? You get a chance to date? I do it sometimes, but it's just it's not, you know. Is it, is it hard for you? It's not even hard. I think it's me at this point. Is I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's pretty much me. Well, I had a guy ask me, how, how do activists make money? Like, what, what do you do? And where, how much money do you make? I'm like, okay, this up? this date is over. <laughs> that's I'm, I'm it. So that's <laughs> that. that. For that. Do you, about do you, next. Do you get guys that like expect you to be like sister soldier? Like, no. You do you like, get guys that no. feel like they have to be over aggressive because they feel like you're strong? Well, that's. I think they say that's why I have nobody because I am. Crazy. Too much. Well, Are they say like I'm crazy. crazy. My guys say I'm crazy. No, <laughs> know, no. Yeah. But yeah. you know, yeah. but this isn't. You want so y'all going to the next subject? Now, because <laughs> now y'all. It's a whole nother. This is a whole nother episode. <laughs> <Just kicking. laughs> so now we on. Now we on a whole different right. thing. He's just kicking it. Man. You know, it's just show. I want to live the soft life. Complete. I am living the soft life, and I'm making the. I'm doing that on my own. And, but I feel, I find two things. One, I'm not going to deal with stress. I can't deal with it. I'm already stressed. So, you know, a lot of our brothers, they got a lot of access to a lot of women. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. When people were like tripping over, oh, dude, cheating on Nia Long, I was just sitting there confused. Like, what y'all, yeah. what y'all really don't see that all these women, Beyonce got cheated on. Like, right. what are we talking about mm -hmm. here? This is not, mm -hmm. like, I, I didn't see. <laughs> This is what it goes on. Yeah, it wasn't. Not that it's not a big deal because it shouldn't have happened, Absolutely, but, but it they, happened. They made it like because of yeah, the, uh, like, like, and I'm like, like is he along it? somebody different from me or mm -hmm. whoever? Or mm -hmm. B, no. We. This is something that women have to. A lot of women deal with because there is a lot of access for men to women. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of access out there. There's not as many available, um, viable men. Available as there are women. So maybe you need like a, a guy that's an activist. Not no. necessarily. No. Mm -mm. She needs somebody to balance her out. Be her piece. I need yes, the what I need <laughs> is what I need. She need a doctor. Is the right person. Period. No whatever what it they, is. whatever bus driver, mm -hmm. whoever. I don't she care who it is. I need. Don't say that. 
But you give yourself the time to date. And no, not necessarily. That's a big part of it, too. People that, like, I know. I got to do better. You like, that you like who you like. You don't really like people too much. I think I'm more so. I'm speaking for herself. I am speaking for myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I, I do like it. what I like, but I'm also I'm a very clean person. Yeah, you look, be ready. Very clean person. She so is clean to I'm the point Gemini. where it's, okay. it's people retarded. don't even like to go to my house, so that's fine. So that's another <laughs> thing. You know, I'm very particular about a lot of things, and I'm strong. You know, I have my own money, so I don't need money from you. I have my own access to everything. It's not many places that, if, at least if my management calls or something that I can't get in. I'm, I'm, I'm well respected. I'm on platforms. The most major, I was on the Grammys with Little Baby. Like, Let's not forget that. Like, that is? Let's not forget that. So, 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 so like, here's the thing, not, not to cut you off, but just to kind of expound on that. So do you find that? Maybe uh, intimidating to a lot of guys that may say like, "Oh man, I've seen her on CNN talking fiery and powerful." You know, she's a mm-hmm. voice because you have that voice. Mm-hmm. You have a voice. You have that voice is strong. Is that intimidating for certain guys? For certain boys, yeah. Boy, oh, boy. Certain. you heard her. Yeah, for certain <laughs> boys. She meant what she said. Georgie, Georgie having a good time with you. Listen, Georgie, listen to this. This is me asking her question. These are not things that I personally have issues with. You understand me? You understand? I don't have allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. You're a good person. <laughs> you're a good person. You're, you're, a good, you're a good person. You need to try me to dick. This is your show. But I, I, I was just trying to understand though, because, like I said in the beginning, right? It's like when I see y'all, my perception is like, it's like y'all never off. Y'all always on. And, and when I say y'all always on, it's like, how do you have time for personal, whether it's raising a son or having a personal life or dating and things of that nature? Yeah, you know? I mean, dating is, it's, it's a trigger, the conversation. It's mm. a trigger because dating for me, like I'm looking, I saw a meme today. I said, hallelujah, Jesus. I can't <laughs> wait to post it. It said that some people are just looking for love just for love's sake but other people are looking for magic and i'm definitely looking for magic and i believe that i don't believe that magic exists for most people when you're young but i think that once you get to be 40 Mm -hmm. 40 plus years Mm -hmm. old you have to make a decision at that point to make magic happen Mm -hmm. right like you should be an adult enough to be committed to the person that you with if you're going to sleep with other people outside your relationship, then both people need to discuss that and make room make for whatever and have understand. understanding. But you should be a person, you know, you should be able to be honorable and do the right thing, right. you know. And if you can't do it, then it's fine. So I don't know. I'm good, though. You're good. Because when I wake up, I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. I'm not like. <sighs> <laughs> and we get like that. And I know up. I can get you like that. You, so. You, 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 Right. <laughs> that was shit. funny. You roll over, like, oh my God. And or or you oh not? Are you looking on the phone and you trying right. to find and what happened? Right. But I'm ha- my family. granddaughter is is coming into the world. I don't see this for you. My granddaughter. She's gonna see this for you. My granddaughter. That's, a that's the so that's big. It's big. So I I thought about it, and the other day I was like, I got everybody together. I said, I got it. They like what? I'm like, I, my granddaughter is gonna when I'm. 70, so at that point I should still be popping, right? Because Felicia lit. Rashad is popping at 70. Yeah. Gotta drink a little more water, but a little less do say, a little more water. <laughs> um, but because she doesn't drink at all, uh, Felicia Rashad, yeah, and then look at her, of course, you see why. Yeah. But anyway, so I figured, okay, in 30 years, she'll be 30, so she's grown, fully grown. I'm 72, mm-hmm. so I'm still young. Right. I'm going to build my house where on the base, on the, not the basement, the bottom level, there's a suite that I can live in, and mm-hmm. she can have the rest of the house. I'm going to put everything in her name, and she's and that's it. Her mm-hmm. trust fund is going to be my money. So that's what we talking that's, about. That's, that's, that's the goal. That's beautiful. That's the goal. That's the end game. That's the end game. If it's a man, hopefully, but if there's not, I'm taking care of it. I'm not going to be alone. My granddaughter's going to take care of me. <laughs> But you're not gonna be alone. You're a lovable person, and you just have a lot. You have goals, and missions. you gotta slow down a little <laughs> bit, though. It's not what we do. It's not easy to maintain a relationship. Yeah. But that magic. It's not your first priority. You that person, whoever that person is, that sparks that magic. Is gonna they be think this is the love show, but magic. it's not. It is. No, because it's like magic what keeps you inspired show. and what <laughs> keeps you going through all that. Need that. You need that person or that love. Like they love love. They ain't loving love. 
They ain't level no, up. No, I just know no matter how strong you are, like you need something to keep pushing you in that inspiration and like you know. Holla, we got activists down here. What's your point? <laughs> they <laughs> still need. Like, for real, like we fighting the power. Exactly. You she was asked just talking question. about. She was Listen, just talking about. So what do you want me to do? You <laughs> ask. We telling you the answer. But she was just talking about her mental health, even as an activist and all that. Like that's what I feel like. What a good partner is supposed to be there for. Like literally, it yeah. should be. But you know, they can also be a part of your mental breakdown. Right. So that's a whole other thing. So for now, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm living my life. And I know that God is going to do what is exactly, whatever I need, exactly when it's supposed to happen. So I'm chilling. Mm. I'm not open for reservations at this point in my life. I just am not. No, but that's, un, that's un, understanding that is understanding who you are. Like I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm happy. Mm. I'm super happy. I wake up happy. I'm not looking for anybody else to make me happy. Mm-hmm. You understand? That so, take a long time, dude. Right, but you gotta fall in love with yourself. You do. You in love with yourself? Yes. <laughs> you know, we are so sure. <laughs> I'm a 10 piece. <laughs> yes, I'm a 10 piece. God damn. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, but, um, you know, but I, I, I feel the same way. It, 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 it's not easy. You know, and, and, you know, but we, we just got to keep pushing, you know, man. But, uh, man, it was a question and I, 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 before we get out of here. The mayor. Oh, the mayor, the mayor. So I've, I have known Eric right. since I was a little girl. Because, right. you know, again, I came out of National mm-hmm. Action Network. That was ground zero right. for all right. things right. activism. Right. Um, and uh, Eric was always there. My parents know him as if he's like a child of the movement, so mm-hmm. we know him very well. And I know Eric loves black people, trust mm-hmm. me. He loves black people. But I don't be agreeing with Eric. Certain things he'd wow. be saying, I'd be like, bro, that ain't it. You know what, what I'm saying? What specifically that you don't agree with? Well, I don't agree with his posture and tone around the violence piece. You know, I think that, I, you know, and I, and I, what did happen one day is that we were in, he was like real tough, which I get it. First of all, we have to recognize also as voters that what happens if you don't vote and or put your money up, then they start playing to the audience that does, right? And the elders and the business people do not want folks shooting and killing right. up and doing That's all of right. this in their community. They don't want that, right. right? And even though, yes, there are underlying issues with police every single day, those big stories they're not happening as often in New York, like the big stories, like the Eric Garners right, and right, things right, like right. that, right? So they're not as focused on that, which they should still be, but mm-hmm. they're not. What's happening every day, we can't sit here and deny it and act like it's not. Black people be killing each other, right? Mm-hmm. Young black boys is out here wilding. They mm-hmm. are shooting and killing. So Eric is responding to what he's being called, his attention is being called to by his donors and his voters and the people that support him, the elderly people and the, the rich business people. They like, bro, what? They shooting? I'm, you know, my grandmother's community is whatever. So with that being said, his tone sometimes is like, you know, I'm going to be tough. He also is from Brooklyn. You know how y'all Brooklyn people are. <laughs> so, he, you know, his, so his tone is a certain thing. And I don't, I don't think that that's actually going to solve the problem. I think that his tone has to be that he actually understands what these right. young people need. And to my son's point, get the resources to the ground as quick as possible. And I've had this conversation with people on his team. A bunch, I have good friends that work for him. And I've said all, over and over, we always start at the point of we're going to lock them up. Right. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. There's never anybody that says, okay, we don't want people to kill one another, but for a minute, let's reimagine public safety. And let's just, I'm not saying let them just shoot up communities, but let's focus a little less on that for a minute and just put just head first into how we're going to get them educated, how we're going to get them fed, how we're going to get them housing, how we're going to, how are we going to do this? And I bet you, if you focus more of your attention over here and you even let them hear you saying like, I love you, black man, I love you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, and I'm not, I'm not trying to just throw you in jail. I'm trying to figure it out. So now I'm standing at my press conference, just like he stands at the press conference with all the police, standing at the press conference every day with the new uh, uh, czar, uh, A.T. Mitchell, my son, and all of these guys get you and others and make that a part of the norm, too. You know, so that's something that I disagree with him on. And then like this last thing, I was totally pissed with Eric about Mayor Adams 
Mm -hmm. He's going to be Mayor Adams for this. About this situation where the little girl got slapped or hit, punched in the face by the police officer. Did you see that? I didn't see that one. Oh, yeah. you had to see it. It was happened in Harlem. She, she, pushed, ran, she pushed the officer, yeah. but she didn't oh, just push him like first. Her boyfriend was like, yeah. arrested being arrested. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, yeah and, the, and, the, and the officer basically, she ran up, which that is not, do not yeah. run up to police officers when they are in the process of, but these are young people, right? right? And they are all, everybody's screaming and yelling. And she runs up, mm -hmm. and the officer clearly grabs her around her throat like you see it you see him you know right, tussling right, right, with her right, right. and she pushed his hand back and the next thing you know he hits on her right. face and the mayor's like well you know she shouldn't have been there and like making excuses and i'm like nah bro we got to be able to say you as a man there has to be some right. this is a man and a little girl like where where is that and i know he sorry and i know he knows better so i'm trying to understand what is like, what are you talking about? It's just stupid to me, you know, and, and that's so those, those types of things I don't mind saying. I don't agree with. Right. But I do. I also would love to give him the opera. He's only been in office for a short period of time. Right. And there are people who work for him that I know want to do what's right. right. So I believe we have to try to give him the time. And you're not going to always like the way people speak. And, you know, the, people don't like how I speak. They don't like certain things I say. You know, because I tell people all the time, and my son says, well, that's a little harsh. You got to be careful when you say that. But I'm like, I know you don't like me. I don't like you either, right? <laughs> like, and, they, and people are like, that's like rude, right? So I'm, I don't want to go with how he speaks and, you know, all of that. Forget that. Like, let's just look at the policies that's coming out of the mayor's mm. office and whether or not he's actually going to be effective. So I'm giving him a little bit of time, but, you know, we watching. Wow. Tamika, I could talk to you for all night. <laughs> I know. I could talk to you all night. For real. We do it. We do it. Yes, we we, we got to find some more time to talk. Yes, sir. You know, um, but thank you for coming up. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank this you. has thank been great. No, no, it's been you. great. Thank you, thank you so much. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell y'all like this. Thank you, um, <laughs> on camera, on Fox Soul, Kitchen Talk, let me know, let me know what else I can do to help a little more. You know what I mean? I, I tell him that sometimes. I got you. Yo, like, it's coming. You know I mean? like, right. He working what on I, it right now. What I can do to help a little more. You know, I'm not a, I'm not an activist. I don't see myself as that. But I know that I have a voice. And, you know, um, let me know what I can do to help a little more. But before y'all leave, right, um, you know, this is Kitchen Talk. We, we do break bread. Uh -huh. so, you, so it is a cooking show. Not really. We're eating show. But we do eat. <laughs> you know, break some bread with me, and um, before you leave. But you know, thank thank you for having me. This is Pearls Monroe. Oh, you know, yeah. chef. You know, oh, Ala yes. Yeah. yes. Look at that. Good old fish. Look at that. Ala yeah, chef. Oh, you too. get gold yeah, silverware at the like. ten piece. Oh, yeah, ten at the ten piece. <laughs> 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 Like you don't got silverware, it's goldware. Okay, okay, man. You know, it's nothing like this. Yeah, we'll get this some what happens on Fox Soul, right? Yes, sir. Good old fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. That's what Fox Soul is. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Pearl. Pearl. Pearl, you can cook. Thank no, you. No, no, no. She's, she's, she's really a chef extraordinaire. <laughs> but you know what it is. Kitchen Talk. Holla Maroc. Your favorite time, boy. It's your boy, Maino. Free Ricky to a free Ricky. Thank you for my son. Thank you for Tim making Malgary coming up and breaking bread with us. Break bread. <laughs>